Most of the time I record sound myself, using a microphone on a stand, like this one. Or if it's a bigger project, I'll teach someone who's never worked on a film before how to hold a mic and use an audio recorder. But for our last project, I got to work with some professionals. So I thought I'd share what I learned from them. For this short film, I made an effort to think about the sound from the very beginning. I knew that the foley and sound effects would be absolutely key for this part and this part. I knew I wanted a refrigerator hum and some music coming from a really tinny speaker in the takeaway scene. And with the lack of dialogue in the last scene, we needed sounds for running, gunshots, tackles and falls. And since at least three of the scenes weren't going to have any music, the urban ambiences of cars going past and faraway dogs barking were going to be especially important. However, the vast majority of those sounds weren't recorded on set. But that does not mean that sound effects are just something that you add in later. For example, in the second scene, we could have just had Connor walk out and block the path, which wouldn't have made much sound at all. If that's what we'd filmed, then the only sounds we could really add to that would be some footsteps maybe, and the little squeaking sound of the brakes. But I think the scene is more effective when he kicks the bike. Because it gives us the opportunity to have the kick sound, the impact sound, scraping across the tarmac. And it goes both ways. If you feel like the emotion of your scene calls for near silence in every gap in the conversation, then you've got to make sure that you put your characters in somewhere that would be naturally quiet. You can't have it in a cafe or on a train. Basically, the choices you make before the shoot have a huge impact on the sound during and after the shoot. So once you've thought about the soundscape of your film, the main priority on set is to capture clean audio with usually absolutely no background noises. Christian, who was the sound recordist on this project, was in charge of the actual recording. Everything from setting levels to placing radio mics on talent and listening out for any sound problems. We also had Danny as the boom operator who would find out where the frame lines were so he could get the mic pretty much as close as possible without being visible in the shot. He also followed whoever was speaking, which meant learning everyone's minds. Now the great thing about working with these guys is that I could totally trust them to get great results, which meant that I could spend more time with the actors and the DP. I'd explain the plan to Christian and then he'd set up the sound while we were having a scene walkthrough. The only time I had to even think about sound was when Christian let me know that there was a problem with background noise. And that is the second big thing that a sound person needs to do. Listen. Because of my excellent location scouting, all of the scenes except for one were directly next to a train track and right under a flight path. So whenever we had a plane or a train or a car, the entire production would wait until Christian said that the sound had gone. We had vehicles, construction sites, an extremely loud and extremely slow street cleaner. So if you're filming somewhere like that, you really need to schedule in time for waiting for quiet. The main goal with production sound is to record the dialogue completely on its own. So in the takeaway, Christian suggested that we turned off the industrial refrigerator. That way, in post, we'd be free to chop up the dialogue without it affecting the fridge sound, and we could individually change the volume and the tone of each sound independently. So it really is worth having someone who is thinking about sound on set, because the chances are no one else will. The other big job for Christian and Danny was wild track, which is foley or sound effects that you record on location. Christian suggested that we turn the fridge back on to record it, and then we got some more wild track for pots and pans being crushed about in the background of the kitchen, which is what you'd expect to hear in a takeaway. We could have done this after the shoot, but it's always worth getting the authentic sound in the actual location, if there's time. And then of course, after every scene, we recorded room tone or ambience where everyone stays silent for a few minutes to record the natural background sounds. This will be absolutely essential when it comes to post-production, but we'll get to that in another video. So working with Christian and Danny was brilliant, and I will be in touch with them for future projects. But for the next no-budget film, I reckon we could get pretty close to professional results by showing some non-professionals these tips and practicing a lot. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.